Spirit of the Lord to us, hallelujah, as we transitioned out of 2020 into 2021, that there is a season, there is an existence, there is a dwelling, there is a manifestation available to the body of Christ that brings in and ushers in the fullness, not part, but the fullness of Christ, hallelujah. We looked at as a part of that teaching on, on, on uh, New Year's Eve, Ephesians chapter 4, where it talks about one God, one faith, one baptism, one Lord, amen, and that ultimately that Lord Jesus Christ gave gifts unto men, some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting or maturing of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying and building up of the body of Christ till we all, till we all, till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect or mature man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. God says, I'm ready to show up and show out, but I need a mature body of believers, and you, you're in the year 21. 21 is that number that symbolizes being grown. We couldn't wait till we became 21 because that was supposed to be that magic number that says, I'm grown. Well, if you're grown, act like it. God is challenging us if it's the year of 2021 to be a mature body because he's a mature head. How many of you know God's head? Jesus is the head and we're the body and so we have to come up to him. He's not going to come down to us. Today I want to talk with you about declare the fullness of Christ. Say that with me. Say declare the fullness of Christ. Declare the fullness of of Christ. If you want the fullness, you must start off declaring, I am the fullness of Christ. In Christ Jesus, I have a role and I'm going to be who he made me to be, so I'm not the, the weak link in the chain. No, I'm not going to be the weak part of the body. I'm going to be the part that he made me to be and I'm going to be the part that he made me to be in the fullness so when you add your part and her part and his part and their part and the parts of all those around the world the fullness of Christ can be manifested in the earth for the glory of God. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Go with me over to Matthew's Gospel chapter 7 as we begin to look at the fullness of Christ and, and as we look at this we, we can see it through Jesus Christ. Our, our paradigm, but we can also see it through the early church. In, and if it was in the early church, it should definitely be in the latter church. Amen? Hallelujah. In St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, glory to God, we'll begin with verse 7. Jesus is speaking, he, and he says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone, for everyone, for everyone that asketh, receive it. So you've got to declare, you have to ask God, I want to be the one that you made me to be, and I'm asking you to reveal to me who I am, what, I, uh, what my assignment is, and then to equip me to be what I am birthed into the earth to be for your fullness, O oh God. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will give him a stone? Rhetorical question, which is ridiculous, and we all know, no, we're not going to do that. It goes on to say, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts, to oh, a, a stone, or if he if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? No. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Now, in another re reference, it talks about an egg and a scorpion. The, that's in Luke. Dr. Luke going to give you a, a, a few more a illustrations than Matthew. Matthew, the tax collector, he said, let's get to the point. And I give you a couple of illustrations. Boom. All right, let's get to the bottom line. 
Luke gives more, more illustrations because he knows how important it is to understand if, uh, if we as natural parents give good things to our children, how much more shall the Heavenly Father give the anointing to them that ask him? Here, even Matthew is so naturally minded, he says, good, give good things. The other rendition in Luke says, give the Holy Ghost. How much more shall the Father give the Holy Ghost, which is everything in all-inclusive person, God? Give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him so that you can operate in the fullness, not having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And the church for too long has operated in a form of godliness with no power. Oh, if you can't say amen, just say, oh, me. Because it's so anyhow. Glory to God. The first thing that we must do if we're going to operate in this season of the fullness of Christ is we must boldly, everybody say boldly. Come on, say boldly. Boldly speak the word of God. Boldly speak. Declare the word of God. The word of God. Why? Because God watches over his word to perform it. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. He's the light that lighteth every man. Hallelujah. The life. Jesus, the Word, eternal, eternity to eternity. But when he stepped out of eternity and stepped into time, he took on the name Jesus. And, we, and he became flesh and dwelt among us, John says. And we beheld his glory, the glory of that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, the Word, boldly proclaim Jesus in all forms and fashions, the Logos, the totality of Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus came to reveal the love of the Father through the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Word manifested to us in a way that we could comprehend and see a paradigm of what a human being speaking and declaring the Word of God and God anointing that human being and creating a fullness of his person in the earth and God wants that now he wants that now and he wants it in, in, in numbers so numerous that it's all over the world and no personality no individual can take the credit but we must all declare to God be the glory for the great and mighty thing he does for every miracle every sign every wonder every deliverance everything that is good and every perfect gift that comes down from him we must declare to God be the glory for the great and mighty thing he is doing all over the world hallelujah Boldly, boldly, unashamedly, unapologetically declare the word of God. Go with me over in your Bibles to St. Luke chapter 6 as we develop, declare the fullness of Christ. As we go into year 21 of this second millennium, hallelujah, declare, declare. If you cannot declare it out of your mouth, how will you have the faith to believe it or receive it? Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. And it's more accurately faith by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is now. I'm, I am creating faith right now because I'm declaring the word of God right now and you're hearing it right now. It's not coming. It is because I'm declaring it to you now. Now, be the fullness of God. You are the fullness of God. Jesus has anointed you and he came and paid the price all the way from heaven to earth. He came and lived as a mortal man for 33 and a half years. He went about preaching, teaching, and healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God the Father's anointing was upon him and at the appointed time, no man took his life. He laid it down and because he laid it down, three days later, he took it back up again in resurrection power and made a new way, a pathway, a way, the truth and the life. He is that way. He is the door. And through that door, a new life, a new birth could come forth called the born again 
same creature and whosoever call upon the name of the Lord can be a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. Be the fullness of Christ. I commend you a new commandment I give unto you, he said, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth and beneath the earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world, by my spirit. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter cannot come. But it's better for you disciples and followers that I go away because when I go away the Father will send our spirit to indwell you a well of water springing up into everlasting life always a source of refreshing for you an endless source of everything that you need when you get to know him when you allow yourself to be fused together with him he in you, you in he. Jesus, pray, Father, I pray that they may be one even as I am in you and you are in me, that they may be one in us. The fullness, I said the fullness of Christ. The fullness of Christ. It's time. Turn to somebody and say, it's time. Hallelujah. Full is better than empty. Ask your car. Full is better than empty. Ask your stomach. The fullness. The fullness. Fullness is better than empty. Ask your bank account. I know you get that one. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> Speaking to the wealthy. The fullness, the fullness, the fullness, the fullness. Stop settling for less when Jesus came to give us the fullness. Luke chapter 6, verse 45 says, A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which buildeth an house and diggeth deep and lay the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the streams beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. The word. Feel a second thing that we must do as we launch ourselves into the fullness of Christ in 2021. Feel your soul. Say, feel my soul. I'm talking about S O U L. Soul train. Feel your soul, your mind, your will, and the origin. The Holy Ghost gave me this. the origin, the original place of your emotions. Sometimes it's called the seat, the seat. But the origin, that place where every emotion originates out of you. Fill that place with God's word. Fill that place. Fill it up till it overflows. Fill your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions so that you can be the fullness of Christ because his word is anointed. His word is anointed, so you want his anointing. Fill your mind, your will, and the seed of your happiness, your joy, your sadness, all those emotions. Fill it up with Jesus and watch God be God in your life. Second Peter, 
chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, as we declare, we're declaring, we're going to start off on the first Sunday of 2021, declaring our destiny as a part of the fullness. Oh, we're not going to be half, no, no, half doing no more, no. You know, oh, I'm so glad, amen. Half, half behind. You know, you know what? A word, a bad word rose up right there. Right there. I almost wanted to come out. We're not gonna be half, you know, donkeys. No, we are going to be the fullness. I don't know about you. I'm making my mind up. I'm not going through 2021 like 2020 and re react, reacting to everything that's going on. I'm going to declare the authority of a, being a believer, and I'm going to be my part in the fullness of Christ. When you come to me, I want to be full and ready to handle whatever it is we need to handle, and I need you to be the same way because we're his body. I want my body working. Glory to God. Amen. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I want every part working in full operation glory to God nothing missing nothing broken and God is saying to us be the fullness of Christ the anointed one with his anointing the fullness of God Jesus the Christ that was in his last name Jesus the anointed one with his anointing from God Almighty God's anointing on Jesus the man who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God the Father was with him by his anointing by the Holy Ghost that descended upon him like the dove after he was baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist and then the audible voice of the Father said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. God wants to say the same thing about you, my beloved. Because the same Holy Ghost, the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is alive on the inside of you. If Jesus is your Savior and your Lord, that's what his word says. Declare the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive and well unto me, and he's making me the fullness of Christ. My role, my assignment, my part of being the part of the body. Reveal it, train me in it, so that I can be it, Father. This is the paradigm of Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. And of Jesus our Lord, according as his po divine power, according as his divine power, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Hallelujah. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, of the God nature, of the anointing, that you may be partakers of the anointing so that you can be the fullness. God never asks us to do or be anything that he doesn't give us the full wherewithal by which to be. Can you believe? Can you receive? Is the question. Peter got there. He didn't start off that way, but by the time he's writing this letter, he is there. He says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world, having escaped the corruption that is in the world, you can't do it and try to be in the world too. Oop. Oh, here we go. Here's where some tweaking has to go on. Oh, Jesus. In 2021, I'm on cut ties with some of this worldly stuff. The little foxes that spoil the vine. Whoop. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Oh, Lord. The spirit is willing, but 
but the flesh is weak. <laughs> and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, self control. And to self-control, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love that gives away, charity, unconditional love. For if these things be in you, for if these things be in you, for if these things be in you, and abound. They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Fill your mind, your will, and the origin of all of your emotions with God by his word. Now, I want you to turn to somebody and say this with me. Accept the assignment. Turn to somebody else to say, accept the assignment. Now look up here and say, Pastor Cole, accept the assignment. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Jesus Christ is our example. And he declares, after, he, after they handed him the scroll of Isaiah, he turned to the place where it said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So, somebody say, Jesus accepted the assignment. The Father said, this is your purpose. He anointed him. And Jesus accepted the assignment. He embraced what God had for him and not doing his own thing. Ooh. Ooh. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Thank God Jesus accepted his assignment. But now he turned around and said, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. What he was saying is, the assignment the Father gave me, I'm giving you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And hath reconciled us unto himself, and given us the ministry of reconciliation. God wants us in the fullness reconciling a lost and dying world to him before it is too Late. It doesn't make a difference what livelihood you're in. There is an anointing for you to be the best of the best of the best at what it is that God has you doing. Paul was a tent maker. Hallelujah. I know he made some good tents. Jesus was a carpenter. I know he made some good chairs. While he was living out his destiny and ultimately at the shifts and tra transitions in his life, stepping into the new assignments along the way till the entire assignment was fulfilled where he rose up into heaven in a cloud and sat down at majesty's right hand for you and me. Hallelujah. The assignment. The assignment. Accept your assignment. I don't care if you're an, you, I don't care if you're a, 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 an athlete. I don't care if you're a teacher. I don't care if you, you're an architect. I don't care if you're an engineer. I don't care what it is that God has called you to. There is an anointing that comes along with it for you to be one of the best, if not the best, and to be able to shine forth the fullness of his being. Hallelujah. 
what would it look like? What would the fullness of Christ look like in 2021? How would we, how would we be able to see and know that, 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 that the fullness of Christ is being revealed as God is manifested? Go with me to Romans chapter 12, my last passage of scripture. Romans chapter 12, glory, hallelujah. Beginning with verse 1. I beseech you, I beg with you, I plead with you. Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. It begins with presentation of yourself, spirit, soul, and body, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There it is. Fill your soul, your mind, your will, and emotions with God. Declare and fill your soul with the, the, the word of God so you can be transformed out of the world and into the kingdom. A metamorphosis like a caterpillar to a butterfly. Why? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The fullness of Christ the perfect will of God is that we represent him not without a spot or blemish does that mean we're going to be perfect? no but so close to it pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to be soberly, accord, think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Hey Amen. There are no big shots in the kingdom of God. There's no big shots in the body. We have different assignments, but God sees us all the same. He gives us all the measure of faith, and he says, now, be, be, be. Let me show you how to be and be. And he says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, the same assignments, so we, being many, are one body in Christ. And every one members one of another. We depend on one another. We need one another. Our offices depend upon your office to do its work so that we can be the fullness of Christ. Thank God my toes are holding, working in conjunction with my, my, my foot bones and my foot bones connect to the ankle bone and the ankle <laughs> Hallelujah. And, they, and this one right knee has got to get in line in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. The whole body has got to work together in order for you to feel whole, to feel the, the fullness of who you are. The body needs to work all of the particular members together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul says, don't let, don't let any particular office or person think that they're more important than anybody else. He says, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace, differing according to the grace that is given to us whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith verse 7 or ministry let us wait on our ministering or he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhorteth on exhortation he that giveth let him do it in with simplicity he that ruleth with diligence he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, let love be without dissimulation. 
Let it be unconditional and to everybody. Hallelujah. I'm going to love them, but I'm not going to love them. Abhor that which is evil. Hate what God hates. Evil. Oh, hallelujah. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Do your business as unto the Lord with excellent spirit of excellence. Provide the service that you provide as if you're doing it for God himself. Hallelujah. Rejoice in hope, patience in tribulation. Jesus said, look, be joyful, but realize in this life you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have some trial. You're going to have some stuff that's going to go down, and it's going to be bad. It's going to be of this world. It's going to come your way. Why do bad things happen to good people? Because you're in the world. That's why. As long as you're on this planet, you're going to have good times and tough times and bad times and ugly times, and that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. The thief cometh not before to steal and to kill and destroy. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have that more abundantly. Thank you, Lord. He says, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. So we have to bless one another. We have to be good to one another. We have to help one another. Your body is helping itself. The heart is helping the liver. The liver is helping the pancreas. The pancreas is helping the kidney. The body has to help and work together. There's a reason why he used the body as an illustration because you can relate to the fact when any member of your body is not functioning properly, it messes up the whole thing. Bless them that persecute you. They're coming against me. Bless them. He says, bless and curse not. Rejoice, verse 15. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be sympathetic, empathetic, and compassionate one to another. Your day is coming, and you reap what you sow. He says, we're supposed to be Jesus, the fullness. It's time for the church to love itself and then love one another. Because loving itself is loving Jesus. If you love Jesus, you're going to love what Jesus loves, and Jesus loves his body. He said, a new commandment I give it unto you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another by this shall all men know that you're my disciple if you have loved one to another it's time for the fullness of Christ he says mind not high things but condescend to men of the lowest state. Don't just always want to hang out with the, the heavy hitters and the, the ones that seem to be successful and then you making the ones that are having a challenging time. I don't even want to hang out with them. I want, no, he says, you need to share my love with the least of these. Make yourself available to be a blessing to the hurting and it's not always the person that's out on the street. It could be that person right next to you that's hurting. He says, be not wise in your own conceits. Be of the same mind one to another. Mind not high things, but Condescend to men of the lowest state, be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Don't be a deceiver. 
if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will replay, saith the Lord. If there's any vengeance that's going to take place, let God handle it. Let God handle it. Let God handle that. Oh, we're talking about the fullness of Christ. What would it look like? What would it look like? This is what it's supposed to look like. Verse 20. Therefore, if any, even, he says, therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. What would the fullness of Christ look like? It would look like Jesus. It would look like a church loving itself first and modeling God's love in such a way that people want to know, who are they? What is it about them? I see something without them preaching to me, revealing every mistake that I've made, judging me the world always talking about don't judge me they're making songs don't judge me I don't have to judge you you already judge yourself by writing a song you already know what's wrong with you I don't need to judge you I'm here to show you that there's a way to be set free from your own judgment your own condemnation there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit come on over to the spirit side come over to the fullness of Christ and get set free from your condemnation I was once there but I'm free come on over with me and be free the fullness of Christ Come on, he wants to fill you up with himself so you can have his joy, you can have his peace, you can have his goodness, his kindness, you can have life worth living in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And may we declare, may you declare, may you make a decision in this very moment, I'm going to declare what God says about me. I'm going to be who God says I am, and I'm going to experience the fullness of Christ in me, the hope of glory. I can't do it for you. I can challenge you. I can encourage you. I can support you, but I got to do me. Jesus was the one, the first one talking about do you. Hallelujah. Do you. You can't be anybody else, and you can't make anybody else be you. Hallelujah. Be you. How? In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. He gives us our identity. He gives us our blueprint. He gives us our plan as we declare his word. As we wash our minds of the world and we fill our minds with a new input of revelation from on high. As we let go and let God, the fullness, that song, I need you, you need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me, agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. You, but more importantly, you're important to God because he's ready to reveal the fullness in 2021. Let go. Let God. Make your mind up. I'm going all the way with Jesus. 
Cast the whole of your care upon him, for his yoke is easy, and his burden is light. And watch 2021 be one of the sweetest years of your life in the fullness of Christ. Every head bowed, every eye closed in prayer.